What's going on, everybody? This is Dave from Steel City Jones Flight Academy. Today, we're talking about a true game changer for public safety. I don't use that term lightly because I think, in my opinion, it's overused. But if there was ever a item to be labeled a game changer, it really is this unit right here. This is the CZI IR10 Infrared Spotlight. This is going to be used with in conjunction the H20 or the H20T camera. So let's talk about how the infrared technology works. As you'll see on your screen, we have the whole spectrum of light. And you can see that what is visible to the naked eye is between 400 and 700 nanometers. And when we start going beyond that, that gets into the infrared lighting spectrum. So there's two models of the IR10 the 808 and the 940. This right here is the 808 model, and this is what we use for our testing. That 808 corresponds to 808 nanometers that, of light that it produces. So it's right on the borderline of what the eyes can see. So CZI says that it has the chance and possibility to see some red casting illumination if you're taking a look at the drone in the air from say four or 500 feet. So we wanted to put that to the test. So we put another drone up in the air, really close by this aircraft. And as you can see on your screen, there's really nothing that we can see. So let's talk about the differences between these two units here. The 808 is used for distances under 1500 feet. We wanna also use the 808 versions when we're trying to go ahead and penetrate through smog, or smoke, foggy kind of conditions, we can penetrate that through better. So the 940 is gonna go ahead and be for applications where we wanna be completely stealth. And it's for distances over 1500 feet. The H20 and the H20T cameras have what's called an IR cut filter. So on your screen, you're seeing some examples of the IR cut filter turned on, which is called the night scene feature and you'll see it is going to be limited to what you're going to see. Now, when we add in the IR spotlight, it totally changes everything. With all type of CZI products, we have the ability to use a app that's designed for the remote controller, and we're able to use it and overlay the app over DJI Pilot at the same time. So it runs seamlessly. And that's going to give us a lot of controls that you're going to see on your screen here. We're able to turn it on and off. We're able to adjust the power level. We're able to adjust the overall size of the beam. We're able to also go ahead and trim the overall spotlight to our point of interest. And it's going to allow us to also be able to turn on and off that IR cut filter, which is called night scene very easily without having to go into the submenu settings, which is really improving the overall workflow process on this. It really allows us to also be able to change the trimming of the spotlight when the spotlight is a little bit off center from the actual H20 camera information of the point of interest. Also, we can go ahead and synchronize the camera to the IR spotlight together. Now, again, we're talking about super long distances here. They're gonna be off slightly, especially when the spotlight that we're choosing is gonna be rather really small and narrow. So the first test that we did, I used my son as an actor and I put him out there into a very big, large baseball field and I told him to go ahead and go to the deepest part of that. Now, what you're seeing on your screen is what it looks like at nighttime without the IR cut filter on. So you can see you really don't see much of anything. And that's even with the auto exposure trying to get the maximum gain out of this. So my son was about 900 feet away from the drone. Our first observation is you're gonna see how bright it is. A lot of times when we're trying to go distances under a thousand feet, we actually have to turn that intensity down. And you can see we were even able to have it as low as 30% and we still had plenty of illumination on our point of interest. So, but it tracks very good, in my opinion, for the distances it has and the size of the beam that it has. 
and allows us again to really be able to tailor and tweak that with those trim settings on there. And we're also allowed us to be able to go ahead and change the size of the beam from anything from a very tight, narrow beam to all the way to a flood light, essentially, and anything in between. Now, for the second test, we are seeing how well that the drone can see our van because the van is in a completely dark parking lot. Now, to give you a really good sense of how far I am away, here's what it looks like when I have the thermal camera turned on. We have the spotlight on our van and it's really incredible. You can see me inside the van. You can see me moving around and get a lot of detail in there that, I mean, it's completely dark from 1,100 feet away. You know, we really tried going ahead and zoom in as far as we can. We start getting digital noise to a certain extent, and also we're at nighttime, which is adding more noise into it as well. But when we add in the nighttime and the noise during at nighttime, when we're adding in higher ISOs, you know, it's gonna be a little more limiting. As we pan, there's gonna be able to have some limitations as far as how much panning that you can go to the left. So CZI programs that there is a overall limit and pan limit of this sensor so that it doesn't hit the H20 camera. So I've gotten questions about, is it possible to use this camera with in combination of the H20 camera instead of purchasing the more expensive H20T camera with the thermal features? In my opinion, if you're trying to do search and rescue, you still really need the thermal technology because we can assign temperature ranges to specific power pallets and allow them to really stand out and contrast that's going to be a lot easier to identify like you're seeing on your screen. This is going to illuminate everything and I feel it'll be easier to overlook something, especially when someone is trying to hide. There also is another huge safety FYI I want to put out there about using an infrared light like this, which is a very high powerful light. CZI claims that we want to be at least 300 feet away before we're looking directly into this light because it's such a high powerful light. It can damage our eyes. So with that said, we want to be careful. If we want to use this for search and rescue, we really want to be very careful in the distances that we're looking away. So let's say we want to go ahead and look down into the tree line area. We want to be flying higher than 300 feet high because we don't want to damage anybody's eyes that might be down there that's looking up at the drone. So that's everything regarding the spotlight. If you haven't yet, please help us subscribe to the channel, hit the notification, and you'll get notified when we put new videos out. We're going to be putting a lot of new videos regarding DJI Enterprise out this month and next month. We also have a bunch of new videos regarding more CZI products that are coming out as well. We're selling this on our brand new e-store with our brand new website design that we have. If you have any questions regarding this spotlight, please put them down in the comments section below or just reach out to us directly. We'll be glad to help you. Thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you soon.